betrayed with a kiss. Hello, and welcome again to another episode from our series, Cross-Examination. In this series, we are examining those individuals who are at the foot of the cross or played a major role in our Lord's passion and journey to the cross. As we know, there were crowds of people, crowds that included the high priest, the scribes, the chiefs, the elders, those that stirred up the crowd, stirred up the crowd for them to crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus to his death and free Barabbas. Christ being, of course, the just, the just judge was put in trial with those much less than him. Amongst the high priest were two by the name of Caiaphas and Anas. Both high priests held economic and political power as well as a prestigious position in society. With me today, I would like to introduce Dr. Haini Ashamullah from St. Mary and St. Antonius Coptic Orthodox Church in Ridgewood, Queens. Welcome, Dr. Thank Haney. you. Hi, nice Mary. to have you. Thank you. So just, just to start, if we could just start by talking about what was the job of the high priest? How were they looked upon in society? So the high priest supposedly is a religious rank. However, they carried much more power and clout than just the regular priest. So they have the religious sort of forum. They control a lot of economic things in the temple. So a lot of money that comes in back and forth, they are in charge of a lot of money mm -hmm. of the uh, temple. And that probably will have a lot of implication of why they didn't like Jesus, which I'm sure we'll be talking about. They also are the chairman of the Sanhedrin, and that usually consists of 71 priests. So in a way, it, it combines, as you just mentioned, religious power, economic power, and political power, to the extent that the high priest at that time is feared, envied, and hated by oh. the governor like Pontius Pilate. So in a way, it's a love-hate relationship. He controls his people, but in the same time, he can make a revolution of his people against the Roman uh, ruler. So the way they work with each other Caiaphas or Anas with Pontius Pilate was sort of a uh, love-hate relationship. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a lot to be spoken about their abilities, and unfortunately there was a lot of corruption also during that time. Mm -hmm. Caiaphas was the real high priest at that time. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was appointed a high priest in the year 26 to 36. He stayed, actually more, he stayed about almost 18 years. So during Jesus' time, he was the real high priest. However, though, his father-in-law, which is Anas, mm. Anas had four sons and one daughter, and this daughter was married to Caiaphas. So although Caiaphas was the real high priest during Jesus' trial, mm. however, his father-in-law, Anas, was still in power, although he is not officially mm. the high priest. And that's why we read, actually, in John and says they led Jesus away to Anas first for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas which was the high priest that same year. I think also all four, all four of his sons were also right. high priests. This is a priestly family. Anas family is all priestly yes. family and even his daughter was married to Caiaphas so even mm. his daughter is almost uh, the wife of another uh, high priest. Just to maybe paint the picture um, to today's society, we have the governor, we have the Supreme Court, we have senators. Where would you, using this judicial, judicial system that we have in place today, where would you place Caiaphas? So Caiaphas was even higher than one person authority during our time now. He is the chairman of Sanhedrin, 
which almost combines the Senate and the Supreme Court together, and he's in charge of that. And as I mentioned, there are 71 members, and he's in charge of both. And that's why he was quite feared and hated at the same time. Mm. How, how powerful would you say Caiaphas was? How powerful do you, would you say he was in the fact that he even convinced the crowd? I mean, his, his power is reflected by many ways. One, he is the one who influenced all the members of the Sanhedrin that it's better for one man to die rather than for the whole nation to perish. Mm. And he really made the whole revolution against Christ. Second, he is the main player who was able to sort of interact with Judas and almost make the, the, the betrayal plan. Mm. Third, when Pontius Pilate, Pilate was about to almost escape the trial by throwing the card of Barabbas, it's said in the Bibles, in the, in the Gospels, that Caiaphas and the high priest almost inflamed all the crowd and they listened to him, maybe out of fear, maybe out of respect, I'm not sure, but it's probably more fear than anything. And he was able to inflame them all against Christ, where five days before they were saying, Hosanna. And I guess due to this guy, he was able to convert them all to become haters rather than followers to Christ. Um, the other reason to reflect his great power is when he went to Pontius Pilate very early morning Friday, mm -hmm. he refused to enter Pontius Pilate palace because it was the day of the Passover. And of course, in a Roman palace, there will be leavened bread. So he's not allowed to enter because he will be defiled. So he even requested Pilate to come out to him mm. to discuss the matter of Christ rather than he goes in. And of course, Pilate never liked that. But at the, at the end of the day, Pilate is playing the same game. And, and uh, this guy, Caiaphas and Anas, know exactly how to squeeze him in the areas that he cannot say no about. So they are very vicious, very unjust, very unfair, and very influential. Very influential. It's actually really surprising how five days, that same crowd, very, very, very much the same crowd that welcomed him almost in a triumphant entry, was now shouting, crucify him. Yes. So what was Caiaphas's role now during this whole trial? Our Lord was tried six trials, six courts two of them on the eve of Friday, Thursday night with our time. The first one was in front of Anas, and the second was in front of Caiaphas. Caiaphas' trial, he brought false accusations. He brought some witnesses who did not even agree with each other. And finally, Caiaphas did what I think almost like a, a theatrical type of reaction. Mm -hmm where he asked Christ, who has been silent all along, are you the Messiah, son of God? And I think Caiaphas was, was almost ready to bet that Jesus was going to answer, and he was willing to take this as the final sort of nail in the coffin. So our Lord answered and said, you say so, meaning I am the son of God, yes. and from now on, the, the powers of the angels will come from up high. And so all of this sentence, as I said, theatrically, Caiaphas tore his garment, his priestly yes. garment. And as it is written in Leviticus, the, the priest, the Jewish priest, who actually tore his garment, that is a symbol of the failure, the decline of all the priestly um, uh, priesthood of, of the Jewish kingdom. Um, on the same trial, actually, Caiaphas did something, uh, probably the worst, one of his worst crimes. I mean, when he was saying, when he was asking Christ, are you the son of the Messiah? And Christ answered, one of the slaves slapped Christ. So Christ asked him, why are you slapping me? And he said, is that the way you answer the high priest? Yes. And of course, the high priest is sitting there. And of course, all of this is completely unjust because there was no crime um, 
done or proven really? or confirmed yes. yet for him to be going through all of this. So I think the trial was, was completely a failure or a joke, but in spite of that, our Lord was uh, silent almost all through except for that question. The high priest at that time depended on their followers, and their followers were a source of uh, prestige, as you said earlier, a source of money, econ economic power, and political power, because that's what he gives him the power in front of the Roman ruler, like Pontius mm. Pilate. Jesus almost grasped all the, the lights from the high priests. He is kinder, he is teaching better, he is kind to the, the poor, he is telling them much better teaching than the high priest, and at the same time never asked money and never requested any types of, of um, payments. So a lot of people start following Christ to the extent Caiaphas starts saying, look, you guys do not, um, do not uh, matter anymore. All the world has followed him. The second threat, I think, to the high priest, mainly to Caiaphas, but also to Annas, that our Lord was a threat in the form of he start telling the people that the worship in the temple was not obedient to God's way. And, and on Palm Sunday, when he went in with almost half a million people following him, and he went and purified the, the outer yard from all the money exchangers and the, the people who were selling um, the Passover uh, lambs and the Passover um, uh, pigeons and all of this, these were the main source of money to the high priest. And a lot of this money were going into their pockets. So for him to, to claim that this house is my father's house and you have made it a den of thieves, right away he is telling them you are the main uh, gangster almost of this den of mm. thieves. Second, he is telling all these people who are paying money to the high priest, get out of my father's house. So the money is gone, the followers are gone, and maybe even his political uh, clout will be reduced. So I agree with you. He is definitely a major, our Lord was a major threat to uh, Caiaphas. So say the trial was, was a failure and Caiaphas turned after, after actually Pontius Pilate teared up the papers and said that that Jesus is innocent, that I have no accusations for him. This is when Caiaphas turned and asked him, are you the son of God? Yeah. And waited almost for the answer that Jesus was going to give so that he could say this is blasphemy. Would you say Caiaphas is responsible for Jesus' death? If you want to take the purest answer, then probably they are the main culprit, mm -hmm. both of them. Caiaphas and Annas. Of course, you have to name many other people, Pontius Pilate, Judas. But the spiritual answer though, we are all responsible for Jesus' sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I cannot blame Caiaphas today. And I myself sometimes would care for my job and my prestige and the way I look exactly as Caiaphas did and would put Christ into trial, or at least they ignore him or, ju or judge him, as you said earlier, unfairly. Mm. I am Caiaphas occasionally. I am Annas many times. And maybe I am also Pontius Pilate. Each one of us have played a similar role to the mm. actual persons around the cross. So while I agree with you, they are definitely part of the culprits, I, I don't want to escape my own role in playing a role in Jesus' sacrifice. Would you say, okay, so Caiaphas and Anas, we know are both high priests. Would you say that they, that they feared God or they feared their, maybe their loss of, loss of power, their loss of privilege, um, their, their loss of prosperity? Would you say that their fear of God had been replaced by the pleasure and the security that they had? Yeah, uh, I think 
I think that's a very good statement rather than a question that they, the, the fear of God definitely wasn't in their heart. Mm. Uh, you can see it in many levels. One, look at the way they allowed the service and the worship in the temple of God. Complete chaos, um, a den of thieves as our Lord mentioned. People are um, stealing in front of their eyes and all what they care about, not the worship as much as the money and the prestige. The other level is, look at the way they're supposed to be men of God. Yes. They allowed false witnesses, they allowed accusations to go untrue. They actually unjustly took a guy who, in their eyes, just a simple guy, but they know very well he hasn't done any of the things he said because they claimed that he is not allowing taxes to be given to Caesar. They claimed he wants to be a king of the Jews. And many other accusations which none of them were true. So at, a, at several respects, those guys have over the years, I'm not sure how they started, but definitely towards this time, the fear of God has diminished drastically. Which is, which is actually a shame. You know, for, for someone to have that respect of the people to call him a high priest, but yet doesn't follow that role of being a high priest, but rather mm -hmm. have that jealousy and have that greed and have that selfishness yes. built in inside of him and stir up such a, a riot in the, in the crowd. Yeah. How would you characterize as a person, how would you characterize Caiaphas? Caiaphas is a very ambitious, politically interested person who, in his own defense, thought that he is saving the Jews from the Roman Empire to overtake them because Jesus was going to go into a completely different direction, which is be merciful, be kind, be loving. And while that's a very false of him to do, that was probably what he's telling himself. I'm doing all of this as a high priest to save my nation from a, a person who is going to make uh, an insurrection and bring the Roman Empire to come and take over the temple. But we have to, to really call him as he is. He was a very unfair and politically interested person who for many, many um, respects and interests have really led our Lord to go into a very unfair trial. You mentioned a little while ago that there were that there were six um, mm. six six courts, but you only mentioned two. Okay, so yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a good question. So I mentioned that on eve of Friday, which is Thursday time, a Thursday night our time, mm. there were two trials: one in front of Anas and one of Caiaphas. And I must say, both of them are unlawful because according to the Jewish law, they are not allowed to take an executionary decision at night, by night. A person cannot be executed as a decision in a court of law by the Jewish Sanhedrin at night. So they came back very early morning, Friday morning, mm. And they reconvened again with both of them present, and they agreed that whatever decision we have taken last night, that it's better for one person to perish rather than the whole nation, we agreed that this person need to die. Mm. So that's the third court. Then ag again, early morning Friday, now we are in the first hour of Holy Friday, they escort Jesus to um, Pontius Pilate's house, where he has his third trial. And from Pontius Pilate, he went to Herod, that's the fifth trial. And then Herod sent him back to Pontius Pilate, and that was the last and final sixth trial. Mm. So altogether six, three of them Jewish, three of them Roman. And a lot of scholars have looked at this, that Christ sacrificed himself to both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He was mm. tried by the Jews and he was tried by the Gentiles. And you can almost sense that the high priest 
have examined him so much and found no blame in him. And at the end, they still crucified him. Which almost like the Passover lamb. The Passover who is kept from the, the 10th of the month till the 14th of the month is being examined. And once they find nothing wrong with him, they slaughter him. They slaughter it. So our Lord was examined by the high priest. And when they found that there is nothing wrong with him, they slaughtered him. They crucified him. So where, where, was, where did they put Jesus? Yeah, the th that's actually a very good question because I think it's not quite clear in the Bible. But it's almost said only in, in, in the Gospel of St. Luke that after Gethsemane, he went to Caiaphas' house, Han Annas, and then Ca Caiaphas' house. And Caiaphas' house, they tried him. Then they kept him in his house till the morning. And in the morning, they tried him again, took him to Pontius Pilate. Now, I did my own investigation, and mm -hmm. there is a church in Jerusalem today called St. Pierre Gallicante. And basically, this is a Franciscan church that it's really a church built on the remnants or the ruins of Caiaphas' house. And this church is allocated for St. Peter the Nile. So under the church or under the house of Caiaphas, they found dungeons. And that's where they think Jesus was kept all through the night. So every year I have this question that I ask only, I guess, myself, you know, on the next night, which is Friday night, eve of Saturday, we spend the night on Apocalypse night mm. um, in the church. Yes. But we never really spend the night on Thursday night next to Jesus inside the prison. If you think about it, we don't want to leave him in the tomb on Friday night through Saturday. But the church probably because she feels that we, we will be very tired to spend two nights successively and all through the day on Friday. It sort of never really was planned. But hopefully all of us, when we go home after Thursday night, Pascha, which is Eve of Friday, we understand that Jesus now did not go home to stay the night with his mother, St. Mary, or with his disciples, St. Peter, or any of this. He actually stayed the night, spent the night in a dungeon wow. under Caiaphas' house. Mm. And I'll leave you and all the audience to imagine what could have been happening to him by all the, the, the tyranny of the soldiers of the temple who are given enough uh, decisions that you can do with him whatever you like. And that's why on the next day, Christ appeared so tired because he did not probably sleep one minute, and he was really being tortured. Tortured, mocked, probably. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of artists have actually painted, um, uh, hopefully I can show one of these pictures here, um, uh, the, the mockery, as you said, of, the, of Christ's mockery under Caiaphas, the high priest's house. Along the same line, and probably the same time, Something else happened, Judas. Judas decided to regret. And once he saw the trials, and I think he realized that it was completely unfair, he went to Caiaphas and he told him, I have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I have given a righteous blood. And of course, Caiaphas, who has been quite waiting for the moment to catch Jesus, didn't care it's a righteous or no righteous. He told them, you do whatever you want. So he threw the money and went and killed himself. But look at the irony of what the high priest did. The high priest decided that this money is a blood money because it's the price of, of Christ's betrayal. Yes. So they know it's a blood money. They know that they paid for Jesus' betrayal. It's, mm. it's so ironic what happened. So they decided out of their own self-righteousness that it's unlawful for the blood money to go back into the, the safe of the temple. 
Almost the treasury or the treasure. The treasury yeah. of the temple, exactly. So they took the money and bought a very small piece of land near Golgotha called Akeldama, which is the farm of blood. Mm -hmm. And it's written in Jeremiah that this Akeldama or um, the farm of blood became a place where all the foreigners who pass through Jerusalem and die and they not have a place to be buried, they are buried almost on the expense of Christ's blood, if you think about it. Wow. He paid for their burial through wow. his, um, through the betrayal, but through his sacrifice. So it's so ironic what's happening. Judas threw the money. They feel very righteous that he cannot take the money back. They get something and this something happened to be at the end, Christ is planning by the economy of salvation to be a piece of land to even help those foreigners who may die. And at the same time, he is being tortured under the roof of the house. So, so ironic. What, what, can, we, what can we learn from Caiaphas? We know, um, what advice can you actually give our viewers who are watching, who are watching today, um, who are struggling? with maybe, let's say, false accusations, who are struggling with the fact that they feel that the world is against them, as it was the world had rejected our Lord, as it was um, he was despised, he was, he was mocked, he was cursed, he was... So many of our viewers actually are struggling with whether it be false accusations, the world, um, the world is against them, life is always a challenge, they seem that they can, they can never win. I think our audience are two groups. One group, they fall under what you just said. They are unfairly judged. Some people accuse them wrongfully. And the other group, unfortunately, are the false accusers, mm -hmm. are the people who put these people in that situation. So some of us are Caiaphas and some of us are Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we are never able to become true Jesus, so we are almost depressed when we fall under a major unjustly treated situation. For that group, there isn't better than remembering Christ, who is the complete, blameless, only man that walked on this earth. Mm -hmm. And in the same time, he was willing to accept all what it comes upon him for the better good, for the resurrection day. Mm -hmm. So I tell everyone who goes through a trial of unjustly treated, you are Christ in that situation. Don't lose hope. Do not cut the ear of Malchus. Do not scream, accept what it comes to you unless you can defend yourself. But if you cannot defend yourself, wait on God's mercy because sometimes there are situations you cannot come up and say, I, I have an evidence that I didn't do anything wrong. If you have an evidence, you can go to court, fine. But if you cannot, and this is a group of friends that somebody claimed something wrong, you cannot prove it, stay like Christ. But more importantly, I tell the others, don't be Caiaphas. Don't be, do not unjustly treat anyone. Do not be unmerciful to those you have known that they have done a mistake. Do not, because you were given the, the privilege of knowing a problem on someone's life, do not take that against him and accuse him and put him on trial. If you are going to be a judge, be a just judge, because otherwise you would be miserably blamed. Thank you, Dr. Haney. Always Thank you. a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. As the Lord tells us in the Gospel of John, if the world hates you, remember that it, is, that it has hated me first. If we belong to the world, the world would love us as its own. As it is, we do not belong to the world. The Lord has chosen us out of the world. I hope you enjoyed our episode today. Until next time, God bless. My body, my blood. 
betrayed with a kiss. <laughs>